I've said it before, and I'm gonna say it again. This man, Yuya, can't be stopped. He is the harem king. If Luffy wants to be king of the pirates, this man, whether he wants to or not, is gonna be king of the waifus. It is absurd how many people in every spectrum, whether it's the boys being like, bruh, I'm kinda wish I was you, to the number of women teachers, princesses, princesses assassins, the great evil that Talking Rabbit ends up fighting probably is gonna end up joining the harem, and this might be his greatest challenge today. Can he turn? Who is trying to kill him now that, well, I'm not gonna fight the rabbit till I kill apparently this Yuya fella who is apparently teaching you magic. You know damn well this boy, whether it's the great demon king out there or it's the general evil servants, this man, if there's a will, there's a way. And his will, whether he realizes it or not, probably all due to that insane luck stat, is going to turn everyone into a member of the harem. And honestly, I wouldn't have it any other way. Full live reaction to East Leave Episode 10 is available on my Patreon. If you do want to see my full and cut thoughts, you can head on over there because they're supporting. I love this show, man. I unironically enjoy this show. The first half of the show, the star attraction, was Yuya's character going from this character being bullied and ridiculed to still having all that self-loathing and just trying to adjust to a popular lifestyle. Some really good characterization there with a lot of absurd and insane hijinks. And basically, it all relates most likely to his insanely high luck stat. I see some people mention like, oh, he can suplex a bear and no one bats an eye. Or in this episode, he can uh, blow apart a, a volleyball court and basically people will just say I don't want to play against him not how the hell did he do it but there's a couple of things here this isn't a normal reality so therefore normal rules in our own reality aren't going to transfer over and two he does have something that logically makes it so things just kind of happen and are agreed upon and his skill set the things that are coming from the fantasy world to his normal world makes it so the insanity just is accepted because well he's lucky enough that it can just be happening like that now obviously we know he has to be careful I mean a small game of ping pong against someone who looks like they're 40, apparently as a high school student, so you gotta love that JoJo DNA in him. He blasted a hole in that table, and if he could do that to the table, if he would have hit the dude, it would have pierced him and potentially killed him. He does have an insane amount of talent and skills, but he doesn't know how to hold back perfectly. It took him till the end of this whole episode after playing volleyball, probably some basketball, some baseball. It took him till the end when he started playing tennis with a girl who apparently can't hold on to the racket and gave someone a concussion had to get wheeled out because she can't hold on to the racket. I mean, you have to admit, it is insanely fun. If you're looking at this as being something that's supposed to be realistic in the way that, oh, he has magical abilities and everyone's gonna start taking him seriously. No, this isn't like a superhero story where with great powers come great responsibility. If you start doing supernatural things, people are gonna put two to two together that you may be Spider-Man. No, this is a goofy world with elements of good characterization with Yuya's self-loathing and bullying to becoming someone new. But at the end of the day, the show should almost be treated as a parody of the harem genre because it hits all the tropes and cliches, but Yuya being an enjoyable, fun protagonist gets roped into situations where he can deadass say, nah, I'm good, I don't want to join your modeling agency or entertainment agency. And we get stupid moments where the woman just drags this poor bastard away, same energy as the princess and her knight, and apparently gets allowed to take photo shoots of a school, which I gotta wonder if there's laws against that, being able to use them for a magazine. I mean, half the people were apparently taking pictures of titties, so, you know, that's gotta be breaking some rules. But yeah, it's pretty damn goofy. And I like the fact that, you know, this talking rabbit, we've had teases, I think at least twice. The first time was like maybe four or five episodes ago. It was after the credits he was fighting. I'm pretty sure the same girl that we see at the end of this episode, if you watch after the credits. And there was another moment a couple episodes back where we see him. And basically we've been getting teased that this rabbit would come into contact with Yuya and he ends up teaching him some mad kicking skills. There's these trees. I forget exactly what they're called, but basically they're untouchable you can't scratch them it seems to be it'd probably make for the best building materials if you could harvest them and this rabbit's kicking holes through and trains him up to be able to do some pretty crazy physical skills as Yuya teaches him magic because obviously Yuya wants to be able to pay him back for his services and we learn about these great evils how there's these chosen few who basically they need apprentices so that they can pass on their teachings and 
Basically, you go and you deal with the evil. And said evil, one of which anyway, is saying, I'm gonna go kill Yuya, and then I'll kill you afterwards. Now, granted, if they're female, you just should naturally assume they're entering the harem in some way. But at the end of the day, you have to admit, this will be his greatest test yet. He's been training his whole time in this anime for a moment like this. Can his harem abilities persuade great evil, whether you're working for great evil or not, to not no longer try to kill you, but just join in on that harem? Because he was able to persuade a assassin who tried to kill a princess, and his harem king energy was so strong, the princess decided to forgive, make her in this weird poly relationship, and seriously, we just we just said, yeah, that's fine, that's just how the show works. This will be his biggest test yet, and I'm excited to see how he handles it, which is a couple episodes left to go, but man, this show is fun. I was asked recently, like, hey, like, what's some of the most fun you've had with anime? And this show right here, is it my favorite anime of all time, or one of the best of the season? No. But is it one of the shows I look forward to watching the most each week? Absolutely, because I never know know what type of Looney Tunes level nonsense I'm going to get roped into as you have the most impressive harem king build a harem that he's pretty much not even aware it's happening but rather than being a dense and hateable MC he's a dense yet lovable MC and I love the fact that he's just as terrified of his abilities as maybe the viewers are when watching him play a casual game of ping pong. Honestly I think the only thing more impressive than how Yuya is able to not only build such an impressive harem but also with that luck stat be able to navigate such ridiculous level things is the people who have gotten 10 episodes into I got a cheat skill in another world and are still either taking the show way too seriously or maybe just assuming the show is going to be a completely different thing because honestly if you just look at this show as we're taking the piss on so many tropes and cliches as you actually do have solid world aspects in terms of okay here's that end game plot you normally see in a show like this but that to and from and how he literally is just thinking he's still that fat kid he's still that worthless person that people just naturally aren't normally associating with and he's slowly adjusting and you like that characterization aspect as 99% of the rest of the show is just absolutely silly where drunken teachers say I'm going to marry you or he suplexes a bear or he punches out or chokes out a shitty model, or he saves people from fires 12 floors above, they don't question that shit because this show, like Yuya, has insane luck riding with it, and it is such a blast to fall. I love this show. I'm actually going to be disappointed when it comes to an end, and if they announce a season two, you bet your ass I'm going to watch it because this show is insane. I mean... At this point, Yuya might get roped up into a world war and solve it by making all the soldiers join his harem. I don't know. The show's silly enough that it might happen. And I'm here for it, man. But thoughts and feelings on episode 10 of Issa Leave down below. If you got any, leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here. Of course, ring that bell so you can get notified when I upload more cheat skill on the channel. And as I mentioned, full live reaction to this episode is available on the Patreon if you're interested. And while you're there, you'll also get a video shoutout. So today, we have Edre Zahari, Count Viscount. Eric Barton and Cult of Gom. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.